Welcome to Heart Standard. My name is Craig Cairns. I'm here with editor Joel Sked, and we've just been in Tynecastle Park for Neil Critchley's first press conference as head coach of Hearts. And just first of all, Joel, what were your first impressions and what we heard in there? Yeah, I thought it was. Uh, I thought it went pretty smoothly. Uh, I, it's everything I expected from uh, Neil Critchley from the interviews I've heard. Mm-hmm. Uh, heard him speaking, uh, whether it was at Q- uh, Queens Park Rangers or um, or Blackpool, and from what I've heard of fans of Queens Park Rangers and Blackpool have uh, spoken about, is what I expected. He was he was quite he was quite calm. I think he um, he considered questions. He took his time, not took his time answering, but he certainly uh, like oh, seemed to be keen to choose his words. Yeah, correctly. thoughtful Thought, answers. Thoughtful, thoughtful yeah. answers. Yes. So um, rather than just kind of saying the first thing uh, that comes to his head, which which I do uh, when a microphone's put in front of me. So uh, yeah, I, I thought that was good. I thought I, I did think he. Um, I think it was it was, it was pretty clear. Obviously, people have only seen what the bro is. So, uh, if you've watched our YouTube um, video of uh, Andrew Kinley and uh, Neil Critchley, that was that was kind of just the broadcast stuff. So, mm-hmm. we spoke to him for the written press afterwards as well. Uh, so, that stuff will be coming over the next couple of days. And again, he was um, he, he was very uh, very similar. Um, didn't I don't think he's the type of guy who's going to give too much away. He's, I don't think he's going to be the type of guy who's going to get too high or too low as well. I think he, um, he I think he'll probably play a lot of stuff down, but um, in a way that's um, that that's oh, it, is, it doesn't really matter as long as you win a game. Who cares how you come across in the press? <laughs> that was one of the things that stood out to me though that he did. Um, he was asked questions to do with ambition and all these kind of things, and he was. I know it's quite a cliche in football management. He was always quick to bring it back to we just need to win football matches. My focus is on submitting on Saturday. I think I think that was an important thing to do. I think especially with the way it's all it, it's fine if you're coming in at a position of, with hearts at a position of strength, you can probably set longer uh, longer term aims. Mm-hmm. At the moment, I think every hearts fan uh, <laughs> hearts fan knows need to wait St Mirren on Saturday. Um, like Amoni and Nicosia is a bit different, but then you need to. Certainly not lose at Hibs the, the, the following week. I'm, I would say it's more in the, the the win category. So that's that's all it was, and I'm I'm glad he probably did look at it that way. That his focus was on the short term because that's what it should be at the moment. We spoke about it. We spoke about it in the video we did yesterday. There was a lot of fans who are thinking we should probably get a manager who is. Um, um, kind of for the short term and then you bring someone else in for the longer term at a sh- uh, stronger um, with the team in a stronger position but his focus was very much on working with players this week and then starting strongly against St Mirren which, which it should be and I think that was that was good Just kind of on that I, I mean I wonder whether the way that contracts seem to be structured now we know that the last management team they had like a sort of buyout three month buyout period either, either way and that kind of thing and you wonder now that Okay, that's an X length of contract, but that doesn't mean that we're necessarily going to have to pay all that up if it goes wrong. Or we get to the end of the season and we get to a certain level, and then we think, well, now we should sort of cut our losses here and then move on to the next kind of. So I don't think, kind of going back to some of the sort of negativity around the appointment, I think it's not as final as it kind of seems. If you see, what I mean, you can you can make a mistake and then I know we're in a bit of a desperate yeah, situation yeah. at the moment, but you can make a mistake and then readdress it further down the line and things like that I know this doesn't really wash when we're sort of bottom of the table <laughs> I was going to say also just you know, the guy's just in the door <laughs> uh, no I, I, absolutely I think you, you've seen it with just, just the way contracts are it's people people think um, people see I think it's more more with players when you're thinking oh four years you're, you're wrapped in for four years yeah, but with managers exactly. there's, there's there's always different clauses but and they uh, can leave if they do well they can yeah, leave exactly, a, a exactly, I mean he did exactly. that one of his last jobs as well uh, I mean I didn't go down too well at, at Blackpool where he kind of he left for an assistant manager's job, and, and apparently had a seven-figure release uh, release clause oh, when right, he was yeah. at uh, when he was at Blackpool as well. So, um, yeah, so it's it, it's one where I think on both both sides um, they are they're protected. Hopefully, it's the latter where uh, he does so well that he's looked at down south and mm-hmm. people want to want to give him a, 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 a job because that means he's been a success, and I think that's all Hearts fans want. There's a few questions in there for Andrew McKinley as well. There's obviously been a lot made about the process with the with the uh, introduction of uh, analytics and uh, and things like that. Um, yeah, first of all, you can ask a few questions about the process. What did you make of his, his uh, response to those? Yeah, I knew he wasn't going to give too much away because I was I was I know uh, one of the other journalists. He asked about what the 
what are the analytics what were they looking for what were they looking for the analytics to, uh, to provide and it was very much a manager who is good at developing uh, developing talent and I do think another aspect was who has been in a job before where they've improved a team which mm-hmm. um, uh, Neil Critchley has uh, Critchley, uh, has with uh, Blackpool and then but I think the big thing is his background is in player development uh, making players better working on working with them on the training ground I think I know Hearts are in Europe, so it's a wee bit, especially now the schedule has kind of went up a notch, and we're yeah. going to be playing games, uh, kind of two games a week. But like looking, uh, looking longer term, he's going to get more time on the training ground to improve uh, to improve players. So yeah, he basically McKinley clarified what they were looking for analytics wise. I asked about what specific data they look at. Expected not to get too much. He back. mentioned the word black box, yes, didn't he? Exactly which is black, like black the, the box. highly secretive information yeah, that so, he probably doesn't know all of. So yeah, I knew I knew it was, there was going to be uh, uh, like the, it's 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 a guarded secret that we've uh, written about it. So we didn't get too much of insight into into that. There was more insight into the process. Knew that they had um, they, they spoken to him a couple of times. He said that he was the preferred candidate I know we'll come on to talk about that maybe uh, shortly Graham Jones was very key in it and I think that's that's been an important aspect of the the process was that the Scottish FA allowed him to uh, join like in work with Hearts before he actually starts next month and I think it's really important because the person who comes in uh, has to work with Graham Jones going forward has to work within the model of um, the club and I actually found one of the things I found really interesting was McKinley when he was asked about like, the process, he spoke about, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but um, he spoke about names that have been mentioned both in the UK and abroad who are not good at work, who, who don't like to work in the sporting director We model. spoke about it in one of our previous videos yes. where he was kind of ruling out Derek McInnes yes. without mentioning yes, Derek McInnes. Ex- exactly, and exactly. managers of that ilk. Yeah, so that's, I, I think he, he kind of put it, it was like a... Um, firm answer on that side of things and that's the big thing there are sporting director um, uh, kind of model of the club as well as the analytics and whoever came in had to had to buy into that maybe had to um, be comfortable with that Neil Critchley has because he has um, he's, he's, he's worked in Liverpool where there's a lot of data, like data and he's worked at clubs that are sporting directors so uh, Queen's Park uh, Queen's Park Rangers for example so yeah it was in terms of what he said about the process, there was some interesting aspects of it and kind of what it was expected. I think he said the deal was signed, la- finally signed last night, um, but I think it was over the weekend that it was agreed that he'd become the manager. Yeah, and one of the other interesting things, if not the most interesting point of the press conference, was when Andrew McKinley was asked about other candidates. There was obviously reports last week that Hogmore had been offered the job, was the leading candidate. He seemed to kibosh a few of those things. I mean, I, I think there might be a bit of a semantic game going on <laughs> yeah, here. And I, I think, think, so, yeah, I think, I think we can conclude that they were talking to Hogmore, but he said that we didn't negotiate with anybody else. So I, I think he's maybe reading between the lines, he's maybe saying that they had informal talks with other candidates, but Critchley's the only one that they entered for formal negotiations with that's kind of what it sounded like yes yeah, so i think we'd uh, maybe um give him uh g- yeah, trying to answer um trying to speak for him uh, <laughs> because he did say so in one answer he talked about the um concurrent negotiation concurrent negotiation yeah, so, talks, so yeah. uh, concurrent uh, cur- concurrent talks with agents so they're obviously talking to different ages because they wanted to speak to different candidates and then don't put all your eggs in one basket that's folly isn't it yeah yeah exactly don't put all your uh, don't put all your eggs in uh, one basket because, like you said, things can fall through, and then you're you're back to the drawing board. with Scotland with Michael O'Neill a few yeah, years ex- ago. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, and then he kind of almost contradicted himself where we had no negotiations with um, any manager. I think I think you're right. I think it's it was um, he was he was kind of speaking around it uh, again. Probably didn't want to he try not to kind of disrespect the man sitting next to him. Of course, uh, yeah. So. I would imagine there were, uh, well, there were <laughs> talks with uh, uh, with Per Ma- uh, Matthias uh, Hogmo, but whether um, and it's again the difference between negotiations, talks, offers. Th- it will be, um, I think it will be. Uh, he wouldn't be final on that, and you're never going to have him say exactly yeah, that. Exactly. There's some of that stuff that always stays behind closed doors. Yeah, isn't yeah, it? yeah. Yeah. One of the other things to go back to to Critchley. One of the other things he was asked about was his spells. At Blackpool and QPR he didn't mention QPR in the answer Um, and I think he gave I mean this was obviously asked because of 
a lot of the criticism that's been levelled at the appointment has been the recent jobs he's had and yeah. one of those, uh, the recent one at Blackpool and on the face of it, didn't look didn't look like it ended that well. A lot of the Blackpool fans were happy to see the back of him, but he kind of had a different view on it. He he gave a few answers and reasons as to why it was actually a positive season for them. They had come down, got relegated, they had rebuilt the squad after 17 players had left, just missed out on the on the playoffs. He mentioned a couple other results that they got. Uh, was that the kind of answer that you were expecting from to kind of spin that back round the way he did? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. And he's, so again, uh, in the written, um, the embargo thing, he, he actually, I asked him again about, about, his, yeah, about his experiences and what he's learned from him. And he did speak about QPR, so you'll get a bit more there. But again, he was, he kind of looked at it from, he looked at it from a positive uh, aspect. He wasn't, again, I suppose that's, a good thing mindset wise or mentality wise that you look back at these and that's how he would have sold himself to the board as well he's not going to go in there and say yes I mean sometimes managers will admit failure and what they've learned from mistakes and things like that but he's not going to go in and say I've failed at my last job he's going to put positive spins on it and And, things like that and and you look at we will look at his uh, people look at his win records and look at um, being sacked but with jobs there's always context exactly always context and and the context of what he went into both spells with Blackpool were different yeah yeah I I found that I found that interesting found an interesting point of view but he did he did he did say about how um those spells and I, I think he used the word adversity um, helped him and made him stronger as as a manager and I think this is something that we we, we kind of touched on in our video yesterday where I know we talked about it off air is that just different cultures for mm-hmm. example you go to Italy and managers are used to getting sacked but just because um, they view it as like they view it as a positive it's an experience and they, they come back I think Mauricio Sarri was the big one where he failed loads of times and then um, it was only until he was older he was a better manager so I, I'm, I'm hopeful that Hearts are getting a better manager than the Neil Critchley who was at Blackpool in his first spell um, and I'm, I'm looking at it from a very very positive aspect um, very positive uh, way I um, think it's the, the best way to be maybe uh, <laughs> so yeah I, th- I think um, uh, I think it was uh, his view was his view was interesting and I'm probably a wee bit more um, optimistic now than uh, than, than maybe bef- uh, before I don't know if you feel the same way or how you felt you, you felt they came across well I was saying to you I mean I don't think I'm any more positive after the press conference but I was saying to you that I initially was not as bad as some of the people online, but I was initially a bit, oh, I'm not sure about this. And then after I did a bit more digging and saw more context for his last couple of jobs and stuff, I think I came round to the idea uh, more. I'm definitely more positive about it. I don't think there was anything there that swayed me either way from that. But but yeah, I mean, how you, so you're saying you're feeling more positive from it? Yeah, I, I think so. I just, um, yeah, just like, having uh, kind of met him now and j- j- listened to him, and uh, I'm just hopeful that. Can I just look at his background in developing players? And I just, my key is I just hope he gets off to a good start. And I think if he gets off to a good start, I think he, he can be uh, positive. Um, I'd be again looking. It's, 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 I want to look longer term and just I'm interested to see how he develops the squad, what kind of players he, he brings in. What his first lineup's going to be. What his first yeah. lineup's going to be. Um, again, we'll, uh, we'll speak to him on Friday and kind of look into that kind of side of things and just uh, uh, kind of what people can expect over the next couple of days. I asked him about um, his backroom, uh, backroom staff, so it was a wee bit on that. Um, it, he, got, he got asked on his, about his style, asked about why Hearts, and then also why um, how he'll deal with the, the, the pressure coming up here. But yeah, I, I don't know if it's just... Um, I don't know if it's me forcing myself to be positive, but I do feel, I do, I do feel a bit better for him. I'm just, I just hope Hearts fans, um, Hearts fans kind of buy in and get behind him. And I seen, I think it was um, the, the Gorgie Ultra, Ultra, tweet, yeah. Ultra tweeted. Good to see. Yeah, Ultra tweeted about uh, back the team, back the manager. And I just hope like that's the that's a mindset going forward because again, people can be negative online, but. You can have your opinion and stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah but yeah. you still want to ultimately turn up and support the team and, and the manager. That's it, and that's what Hearts fans have done this season. That's like we, Aberdeen, we, look at Aberdeen. Yeah, we, we talk about uh, we, we talk about um, or have a laugh about like uh, Hearts fans, and it's been a difficult a difficult place to play, and they can get on your back quickly and and moan. I don't think that's been the case as much, especially with the Gorgi Ultras coming in, and I think there's been a much more positive atmosphere, especially at Tynecastle, a more patient atmosphere. I know. 
fans uh, kind of there was there was moments where there was a bit of frustration with, with Stephen Naismith, and it did get uh, get to that point because we had the worst start to the season uh, ever. But during the ninety minutes. Hearts fans have been really, really supportive, and I think that's going to be the case on uh, on Saturday. Just hopefully we get off to, to a really good start and win our first league game. <laughs> fingers crossed, fingers crossed. Yes, we will be back before then, I'm sure. As Joel said, there's going to be plenty of stuff going up on Heart Standard over the next few days from this press conference, other analysis and things like that. That's at heartstandard.co.uk. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that wee bell so you get a notification every time we do a video, and we'll <laughs> see you all soon.